welcome back once again to Ratna Saga tutorial. Friends, today we are going to see the summary of UC second year, two year, and uh, all the summary I have made very simple, so that at home by sitting we can can hear the summary very easily, and you can also understand this summary very easily. Let's start. Before we will start the lesson, let's see the about the author. Count Leo Tolstoy was born in 1828 and died in 1910. He is a Russian writer who primarily wrote novels and short stories. Tolstoy is a master of realistic fiction and he is widely considered as one of the world's greatest novelists. He is best known for two long novels. So, two long novels. One is War and Peace. Second is Anna Karnia in 1877. In this lesson, to dear, there is a kingdom known as Monaco. There is a kingdom known as Monaco. Monaco kingdom was situated this kingdom was situated near the borders of France and Italy. On the shore of the Mediterranean Sea, there is a sea named as this Mediterranean Sea, lies a tiny little kingdom called Monaco. Monaco kingdom is also known as a toy kingdom. In this Monaco kingdom, there are 7,000 inhabitants were there and 60 men army in total. So in this Monaco kingdom, 7,000 inhabitants is nothing but populations and 60 men army in total. If lands of Monaco were divided, there would not be an acre of land for each. Very small kingdom we can say. Monaco kingdom having real kinglet, palace, courtiers, ministers, bishops and generals. Some taxes were there. Let's see. The first tax is tobacco, wine, spirits and poll tax. These are the taxes. There is a special revenue comes from a gaming house. So in this Monaco kingdom, a special revenue used to come from a gaming house where people play roulette. This is the game we used to play in western countries, Roulette. You can see here, this is a picture of the game Roulette. In western countries, this game is very famous. In this gaming house, whether people win or lose, whether people win or lose doesn't matter, but the keeper always gets a percentage. Okay, the keeper gets a percentage. The only place left in Europe to play a roulette is found in the Monaco Kingdom. So this is the only place where people found to play Monaco Kingdom. That is in Europe. Okay, Europe. This gaming house become a risk because here people used to come and play then puts all his money. This is the big risk. Okay. If all sorry, if he loses all money in despair, he would drown or shoot himself because of this risk if a person loses all his money so what the person used to do he used to draw or shoot himself this was a big risk and the germans especially the germans quit this game now for the first time in monaco a murder was committed this is the first time happened in monaco kingdom people of monaco were peaceable so people of monaco were normal peaceable such a thing had not happened before this had this had not happened that is a murder was committed this is the first time happened in monaco kingdom a case was registered against the man who committed murder judges assembled and tried the case in most judicial manner there were judges prosecutors jurymen and barrister there were present judges prosecutors jurymen and barristers were present and argued at last they gave punishment to have 
his head cut off. So this is the punishment they gave for the person who committed murder. What Monaco needs? Now what Monaco needs? The first thing is that the first one is a galentine machine as well as an operator. A punishment was given that to head cut off. But for this punishment, the Monaco kingdom needs galentine machine and an operator. This is the machine you can see here in this picture. This is a blade, very sharp blade. This is an operator, and uh, a people is to sorry, the person who got committed that person was slept here. And this rope, we can say, uh, left from here the rope. Once it's discharged the blade used to come down and cuts the person's head this is called the galantine machine and for this needs an expertise operator a meeting was conducted and all ministers were present so ministers inquired from the french government so the from the french government they have inquired about the machine what it could be the cost this is the french, french government then a letter was sent to French government asking what is the price of Galantine machine. So they were asking from the French government what will be the price of this machine with an expert to operate it. The French government replied the Galantine machine and an expert could be supplied and the cost would be 16,000 francs. This is the amount which is given by the French government. 16,000 francs was too expensive for the king of Monaco. They thought once and over it and decided they should also inquire from the Italy government. So they wanted to ask the same machine and operator from the Italy government. The king of Italy was the king of Italy was a brother monarch and uh, might be induced to do things in cheaper way. So a letter was written to Italy government and a prompt reply was received. The Italian government wrote they would have pleasure in supplying both a machine and an expert with including a traveling expenses. Cost would be, the cost would be 12,000 francs. Earlier the road to Italy government it was 16,000 and the Italian government now they are ready to give the machine as well as expertise in 12,000 francs. So two different amount we can see here, two different cost. One is French government, the other is Italy government. The king of Monaco thought 12,000 francs also very expensive. Again all ministers were discussed and how to reduce the expenses. They thought to ask their soldiers. So the general was called in king's court and asked, can't he find a soldier? who can cut man's head off, ministers thought this can be a cheaper way. The general replied, so the general replied, in war they won't, sorry, in war they don't mind killing people. In fact, that is what they trained for. Again, the minister considered and reconsidered and finally they decided the best thing would be to alter the debt the death sentence, this is the way they thought, to alter the death sentence to one of imprisonment for life. This plan was simple, to alter the death sentence to life imprisonment. It also enabled the price to show mercy and it would be cheaper. The problem is now that in Monaco, there is no suitable prison for a man sentenced for life. There was a small lockup where people sometimes kept temporarily. However, they managed to find a place that would help the man to keep and placed a guard over him. The guard had to watch the criminal and also fetch food from the palace kitchen. So the guard was kept and his duty was to look over him and also bring fetch food from the palace kitchen. Okay. The prisoner remained in cell three months till 
a year had passed, but one day the king looking over the accounts, a new item was sorry, the new item of expenditure was found that was keep of the criminal. Okay. There was a special guard and there was also a man's food. It came more than 600 francs a year. So this is very big expensive amount. 600 francs a year. And the worst thing is that the fellow was still young and healthy. And might live for again 50 years. So the prince summoned his ministers and said to them. You must find some cheaper way of dealing that the rascal the present plan is too expensive 600 francs annually okay then the minister summoned and one of the ministers said we must dismiss the guard but then another minister said the fellow will run away someone said let him run away and be hanged to him if the prison if the person who run away may be given punishment to hang to him finally the guard dismissed and waited to see what would happen at the time of dinner. The criminal came out and not finding his guard, he went to the palace kitchen to fetch his own dinner and return to the prison, prison, shut the door himself. The next day again, same happened. The minister again summoned and uh, looking for a final decision what to do. The minister said, we should tell him straight away that we don't want to keep him. So the justice replied to the prisoner, what do you not, sorry, what do you not run away? The question is, if the person, if the gatekeeper was not there, the prisoner should run away, but he didn't run away. There is no guard to keep you. You can go where you like and the prince will not mind. The prisoner replied, but I have nowhere to go. You have ruined my character. So the person is telling that you have ruined my character by your sentence and people will turn their backs on me. Beside, I have got out of the way of working. You have treated me badly. It is not fair in the first place when once you sentenced me to death you have done that then you sentenced me to imprisonment for life and put a guard to bring me my food but after a time you took him away again and I had fetched my own food but I did not complain but now you actually want me to go away. I can't agree to that. You may do as you like, but I won't go away, replied the prisoner. The only way to get rid of him was offer him a pension. Now the king decides to give him a pension. The sum fixed. So the pension was, the sum fixed was 600 francs. This was announced to the prisoner. So the matter was settled. He received one third of his annuity in advance and the king's and left king's domain. So he got 600 francs as a pension in advance. Sorry, uh, 600 francs was announced to the prisoner and the matter was settled. He received one third of the annuity. Okay. Then the prisoner settled just across. The prisoner just settled across the frontier where he bought a bit of land, a bit of land, started market gardening and now lives comfortably. He always goes at the proper time to draw his pension. He goes again to the gaming house and he wins. Sometimes he loses and returns home. He lives peaceably and well. So, two dear means Two dear means too expensive. Two dear means too expensive. Thanks for listening to our summary class. Good day.